unmatched precision, screaming bursts, and iconic gun for an essential role. Hi. Hi. Six Snipes here once again. You guys have really popped off this series, and I promised you all that I'd do an episode for each of my top five guns, and so many of you have stuck with me all the way till now, the fifth installation. This now is the peak of performance, my best, most used weapon. This is my Eiffel Tower. This is my Rachmaninoff's third, my Pieta. It's completely elegant, it's bafflingly beautiful and it's capable of reducing the population of any standing structure to zero. Bruh. Tried and true, trusted and triumphed, in my opinion this is the best gun in insurgency to date. And today I'll tell you exactly why that is. This is the M16, and you're watching Gun God. The M16A4 battle rifle is the standard service weapon of countless infantry riflemen in the real world and insurgency alike. This is for a very simple reason. No theatrics, no flashiness, it just works. Now, I know a lot of people pass this up, not only is it the cheapest option for most classes, totaling in a mere two equipment stocks, but unlike every other battle rifle and carbine in the game, it doesn't even fire full auto. What? What the fuck? A very bare bones build. For two credits, you're not getting a lot to work with here. Generic iron sights, uninteresting polymer construction, and a barrel so long, taking this thing on corners is as tedious as driving a forklift. I see plenty of people ignore, straight up trash this gun. In fact, you were probably expecting my top gun to be the AKM after saying there's a better alternative to the M4 last time. But the beauty of this gun isn't in what a lot of people are looking for, it's in what they ignore. Now, the M16 excels at two things, functionality and accessibility. One, the gun just works. It goes bang, kills fast, and dispenses enough firepower in a timely manner to neutralize targets at just about any range it needs to. Full auto isn't necessary on infantry rifles either. I seem to remember saying something in my first video. Oh, what was it? It's all about... Oh, yeah. Controlled Bursts. This gun has a fire selection that's literally labeled burst. That should be clear enough for you, I think. Very controllable, very efficient on ammo. I managed to tag way more kills with a single mag out of this than any other gun. Two, everyone gets it. Riflemen, demolitionists, observers, commanders all get this gun, and it's not even just security. The insurgents get a trash your version of it, too. Oh my god! Not to mention the mags are everywhere. Off the top of my head, I can think of about six separate guns that take the same mags as this thing, and they're not even all AR platforms. Scavenging off corpses is not difficult when everyone is using this format. There's a reason three of the top five guns on this series have all been ARs. They just work. The underslung grenade launcher makes a return on this gun as well. I wouldn't entirely reiterate the usefulness of such a gadget, however, put it this way. I would use my last equipment credit to get two shootable smoke grenades as opposed to one I have to switch off my gun to throw by hand. Oh, and by the way, the new Insurgency Breakaway update, which drops tomorrow, adds an underslung shotgun to this already highly adaptable platform, giving you all the more reason to start using this gun. Additionally, the extremely cost-effective nature of this weapon also supports a usage of the rest of those credits, which would have gone to an M4 to something like more attachments, grenades and utilities, or in my case, all of the above, plus an M9 Beretta, complete with sexy pro-gamer V-Bucks skin. At this point through the video, you've heard the spiel and seen the presentation and are wondering something. If this one's so good, when should I be using something like the full auto counterpart M4A1? Simple. You don't. Mostly. The reality is that Insurgency Sandstorm is a highly field-based game, and by that I mean it's very open. Wide fields, long streets, line of sight, just about everywhere you look are all features of countless maps. Recent tweaks and additions of more close quarter centric modes on smaller areas like in Domination have been implemented to counter this, but the reality is the vast majority of these maps are just huge. 
The M4A1 is a perfectly reasonable choice to clear a building and engage in high-risk close-range conflict, but you don't need it to move your way up maps like Hillside or Crossing. Here, the M16 just runs better, heck, under some circumstances you can just turn into a sniper rifle with a 7x optic and bipod and be the ghillie suit clad guy nobody can find and everybody hates. The unfaltering precision and optimal range probably have something to do with it having incredible recoil control even in bursts and hitting plenty of shots in the hip fire. The gun cycles between bursts fast enough to dish out sustained fire anyways. If you die because of the burst fire on this gun wasn't enough to save you, it's probably not because you needed full auto, you just got outplayed. <laughs> Playing Ministry? Knock yourself out, grab the M4. Precinct? Go ahead, just stay off the big streets. Literally 90% of the maps in this game though, I'd take the M16 over the M4, the AK, any gun, any day. This is a foundation, a death dispenser at any range, a bastion of standardized weaponry, and an icon of war. And I think that wraps up just about everything I have to say about this gun rather nicely. If you haven't used it, please, by all means, go pick it up, try it yourself, and see what I'm saying about this gun. It also wraps up the series. I came to make a couple videos, maybe say some controversial things, and have some editing experience under my belt. And boy did I just do so much more, thanks to you guys. There's well over a thousand views between this series. Before even writing this, my sub count represents a number of people I could never even dream of reaching already, and the fact that hundreds more came and saw the videos of a guy who just wanted an excuse to play video games is astounding to me. And from here, I have no obligation. I've done all that I said I would, and you've all watched and responded very well to these, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you all. What now? Well, the YouTube algorithm and gods of content dictate that the best play for me here is to make videos about the FAMAS and AUG, which are dropping in the game tomorrow. I'm eager to use and review both as the start of another five-part series. As for the other three episodes of this second season, I'll be dropping a poll on Reddit this afternoon and you guys decide which ones you want to see first. You can also expect a review of the Breakaway update as a whole somewhere down the pipeline as part of a new series. Past that, I think I've said just about all I'm willing to say right now about my plans for the future of this channel. I'll say thanks to all of you once again for making this whole project something bigger than I could have ever dreamed. This has been a wild ride for me, a hopefully entertaining and informative trip for you, and above all else, this has been Gun Guide. I'll see you in the next one.